Okay guys, in this video lesson, we're gonna go through kind of a review topic from one of your math classes, uh, but it's one that's very important to us because as we move into this next segment of our year, we need to be very comfortable with using dimensional analysis in some of our problem solving skills as we kind of move on here. So, so here we go as we kind of move forward. Um, first of all, with problem solving, things I want people to think about as they go through the mathematical side or the quantified side of chemistry, make sure that you're always identifying what you know um, then you want to get an idea of where you're going, okay? So I always think of it kind of as a map, where you pick out where you are, you pick out where you want to be, and then you build the map between the two things, okay? And that really is kind of a, a problem-solving skill for any type of problem that you might have, okay? Um, once you build your map, then you want to basically take those steps to solve that problem, okay? We want to be very careful that we always record our answers with the proper label, Okay, so labels are important in chemistry, and we also want to make sure we match that precision that we need that comes from our measured values, okay, so that we're using the right precision, or essentially that we're rounding our numbers off to the proper location to show proper precision, okay? Please box your final answer for me. That way, when I'm going through it and looking for answers, it's easy for me to identify that. That's just helpful, okay? Here's a step that a lot of students forget um, because they get busy or they just go fast, or they think they couldn't have made a mistake, or whatever the reason is, but it's take a minute to evaluate, okay? Check your work, take a step back from the answer, okay, does it make sense, okay? So things like, if you calculate your mass to be 5,600 grams, is that a reasonable number? Is it not a reasonable number? It's like it's 5,000 grams, it's such a big number, it's not ever possible. Well, in reality, there's 454 grams in one pound, okay? So 5,000 grams, is not even close. It's actually a small number to what it should be, okay? So our weight in grams should be much more than this. It should be 56 to 560 kind of deal, um, 100 times a gram. So this number is actually really, really small in comparison to what it should be. That's where having a good sense of what the SI system units are helps you out. So having a conceptual understanding is what is a gram, okay? How about the density of sugar water? 1.03 grams per milliliter? Well, water has a density of one. We put some sugar in it, so it makes sense that it's probably a little bit more than one. So that number would make sense to us, okay? So take a second to think about your answer, and does it fit the scenario? One thing I promise you, I won't ever give you a word problem of some such that gives you a number that doesn't make sense, okay? So I use real-life data or real-life information, so all your numbers should come out to things that look realistic to you, okay? All right, so there you go. Got no one a yes there? Now, down to this idea of dimensional analysis. Um, dimensional analysis should not be a new tool for you, okay? If you've met the math prereq for this course, you have gone through how to use dimensional analysis in your prior math classes. However, I think it's useful for us to review that process and help you guys uh, remember how we use it. Dimensional analysis is extremely important in the world of chemistry because essentially what we're doing in all of our math is we're using the concept of using dimensions or units to analyze things and to transition from grams to, mil to moles to liters to ounces to things. We're always converting from one unit to the other. And the most efficient way to do that is through dimensional analysis. Okay, So here's our things. It's a systematic process. Um, we're going to use units to guide us. Um, are there other ways to solve the problem? Absolutely. Okay, There is multiple ways you can solve most problems, actually. Um, However, we find that in the world of chemistry, the most efficient way, okay, the fastest way, the way that's going to get you the, to the correct answer the soonest with the most reliability is through dimensional analysis. Okay? So when we're working with this stuff, keep in mind that that is the method, that is the tool that I expect you to use because it is the one that is going to give you the best results overall. Okay? So we're going to go through that method today. Um, we're going to use some relatively easy problems, I think, to do this. That way, it kind of gives you a good review. So hopefully, when the, when the chemistry gets harder, we're comfortable with the dimensional analysis. Um, and that can be used as a, as a tool that we want to use. Okay? So we're just going to jump into some practice. Okay? And roll that way with it. So we're going to convert 15.0 inches to meters. Okay? So we have it in inches. We want to go to meters. All right? So on any good problem, we're going to start with what we know. So we know we have 15 inches. Notice how I am labeling this. Okay. We know at the end of this problem, I want to solve for an answer in meters. Okay. The nice thing about doing this also is I know what I start with, I know what I'm ending with, and I've already labeled my answer. 
So I got that already taken care of, so I won't forget to label later on. Okay? So now I need conversion factors or multipliers. I'll just put three in. I don't know if I'll need three or not to make this happen. Okay? So I want to take this number and find some sort of equality that gets me one step closer to meters. Okay? So I have it in inches. And the problem tells me, if we look, that there's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So that's probably a useful tool for me, okay? So I know that since I have inches here, I want inches to cancel. So I want to put inches on the bottom of my fraction down here. So I have inches down here, and I'm going to convert that to centimeters by using this equality. So I'm going to apply that equality here, okay? In this case... The 2.54 belongs to centimeters, the 1 belongs to the inches. So my 2.54 goes to centimeters, and my 1 inch goes here. Well, now I have centimeters, and I'm trying to get to meters. So I know that the prefix centi means 100. So I know that for every 100 centimeters, I have 1 meter. Okay. And again, I had centimeters here, so I'm trying to get it to cancel. So I'm going to put the centimeters on the bottom side. So mathematically, what we see happening here is my label of inches cancels out. So I have inches divided by inches. I have centimeters divided by centimeters. So they cancel out. So mathematically, my units are gone, except for meters, which matches what I'm trying to solve for. Okay? So now I just need to put it in my calculator. Let the dumb calculator do its job. So 15 times 2.54 divided by 100. So that's how I would punch it in. 15 times 2.54 divided by 100 equals. If you punch it in just like that, you should get to the answer. So if we do that, we see that our answer comes out to be in 0.381 meters. Now notice I used 0.381 because my measurement at the start had one, two, three layers of precision in it. So my answer at the end should have one, two, three layers of precision, ignoring the stuff before the decimal. It's just there to place as a placeholder. Okay? So that's our first example. Let's go do another one. So now I'm going to convert 25 kilograms to nanograms. Okay? So I have 25.0 kilograms, and I want my answer in nanograms. I always just put three in to start. It doesn't always have to be three. It could be two, whatever it is. So kilograms and nanograms, you could probably do it in one step. I'm going to probably do it in two because this works better in my brain. So I know that I'm gonna, I have kilograms on the top, so I'm going to go down to kilograms on the bottom. And I'm going to convert to grams because I know that relationship between kilo and grams. And then if I have grams, I have grams here, then I'm going to convert to nanograms next. So I don't even need this. One. Okay. So I've mapped it all out. Here's what I'm going to do. Now I just need to put in my equalities. Okay. So I know that for every one kilogram, I get a thousand grams. And I know that for every one gram, I get 10 to the ninth power nanograms. Okay. 25 times a thousand times 10 to the ninth power. And if we do that, okay, we get 2.50 times 10 to the, to the 13th nanograms. Now notice, when I did this pre prior, or previously, I flipped this. I said there's 10 to the negative 9th grams for every 1 nanogram. That's the same thing, isn't it? So there's actually another pathway that could have been done. I could have said 10 to the negative 9th grams is 1 nanogram. It's the same thing, right? Multiplying times 10 to the 9th is the same thing as dividing by 10 to the negative 9th. Mathematically, it's equal. Okay. So here's another example. We'll do one and third final example together. This one has an extra layer of complexity to it. So we're flying a single engine plane at 133 MPH. MPH stands for miles per hour. So I have 133 miles per hour. So for every 133 miles, it's going to take me one hour to get there. Okay, so now I have top and bottom I need to deal with. Okay, how fast is this in um, m, m per s or meters per seconds? Okay, so now I want an answer 
in meters per second. So top and bottom again. So not really sure about my pathway this time, so I'm going to kind of take it step by step instead here. Okay. So first I have miles, and I'm going to convert miles into meters first. I'm going to do that first time. So for every one mile, I know that there is 5,280 feet. I also know that for every one foot, I have 12 inches. And I know for every one inch, going back to our problem, the top of our slide here, that for every one inch, there's 2.54 centimeters, I get 2.54 centimeters. This is the only exact conversion between miles, feet, inches to centimeters and meters. Okay, you can look up other ones, but this one is exact. There's no rounding here, so it's the best one to use. Okay, 2.54 centimeters, and I have centimeters, so I know that for every 100 centimeters, I have one meter. I now have converted to meters. My miles have canceled, my feet have canceled, my inches have canceled, my centimeters have canceled. Okay, however, now my answer is in meters per hour. So I need to convert hours into seconds. Okay. So because hour is in the denominator here, I'm going to put it up on the numerator now. So for every one hour, I know that there is 60 minutes. And I have minutes in the denominator here. I know that for every one minute, I get 60 seconds. Okay. Now, I could have done this in one step. I could have said 1 over 3,600 3, if I wanted, okay? But this works well, just the same. So now my hours have canceled, my minutes have canceled, I have seconds, and then the proper abbreviation for seconds is just the S, not SEC. So I really shouldn't have done that inside of it, okay? Now, in the calculator, what I'm going to type in to do this is I'm going to take 133 times 5,280 times 12, times 2.54, then I'm just going to hit divided by 100, divided by 60, divided by 60, and I'm going to hit enter and be done. I'm not going to use any parentheses. I'm not going to use any like equal signs in between it. I'm just going to read it as it see it. So this times this, times this, times this, divided by that, divided by that, divided by that. These are all divided by's here, okay? If you want to put it in your calculator a different way, it's fine, but this is the most straightforward way to do it. We put that all in, and we end up getting 59 or 59.5 meters per second. And again, if we look, we had one, two, three layers of precision. So I have one, two, three layers of precision here. Okay. So those are three practices on dimensional analysis, reviewing the concepts and how we use dimensional analysis. Okay, in the next um, couple slides here, there's additional practice of that. And uh, we're going to do those, I'm going to do those on a separate video lesson. So if you feel like you need more practice, uh, more guided practice, I will show that to you in a separate video lesson that you can look at. Um, however, we're going to end the video lesson here. Um, there will be some follow-up questions, obviously, for you guys to solve uh, using dimensional analysis uh, to wrap up this lesson. All right, thank you.